Book 1, Chapters 6 and 7 of The Antiquities of the Jews, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ethan Rampton. The Antiquities of the Jews, Volume 1, by Flavius Josephus. Translated by William Whiston. Book 1, Chapter 6 and 7. Chapter 6. How Every Nation Was Denominated from Their First Inhabitants. Now they were the grandchildren of Noah, in honor of whom names were imposed on the nations by those that first seized upon them. Japheth, the son of Noah, had seven sons. They inhabited so, that beginning at the mountains Taurus and Aminus, they proceeded along Asia, as far as the river Tansis, and along Europe to Cadiz, and settling themselves on the lands which they light upon, which none had inhabited before, they called the nations by their own names. For Gomer founded those whom the Greeks now call Galatians, Gauls, but were then called Gomerites. Magog founded those that from him were named Magogites, but who are by the Greeks called Scythians. Now as to Javan and Medai, the sons of Japheth, from Medai came the Medeans, who were called Medes by the Greeks. But from Javan, Ionia, and all the Grecians are derived. Thobal founded the Thobalites, who are now called Iberes, and the Mosokini were founded by Mosok. Now they are Cappadocians. There is also a mark of their ancient denomination still to be shown, for there is even now among them a city called Mesica, which may inform those that are able to understand that so was the entire nation once called. Therus also called those whom he ruled over Thracians, but the Greeks changed the name into Thracians. And so many were the countries that had the children of Japheth for their inhabitants. Of the three sons of Gomer, Askenax founded the Askenaxians, who are now called by the Greeks Reginians. So did Riphath found the Riphians, now called the Paphlagonians. And Thrugrama founded the Thrugramians, who, as the Greeks resolved, were named Phrygians. Of the three sons of Javan also, the son of Japheth, Elisa gave name to the Elysians, who were his subjects. They are now the Aeolians. Tharsis to the Tharsians, for so was Cilicia of old called, the sign of which is this, then the noblest city they have, and a metropolis also, is Tarsus, the tau being by change put for the theta. Sethemus possessed the island Sithema. It is now called Cyprus. And from that it is that all islands, and the greatest part of the sea coasts, are named Sethem by the Hebrews. And one city there is in Cyprus that has been able to preserve its denomination, it has been called Sitius by those who use the language of the Greeks, and has not, by the use of that dialect, escaped the name of Sethim. And so many nations have the children and grandchildren of Japheth possessed. Now when I have premised somewhat, which perhaps the Greeks do not know, I will return and explain what I have omitted, for such names are pronounced here after the manner of the Greeks, to please my readers for our own country language does not so pronounce them. But the names in all cases are of one and the same ending. For the name we here pronounce Noes is there Noah, and in every case retains the same termination. The children of Ham possess the land from Syria and Aminus, and the mountains of Libanus, seizing upon all that was on its sea coasts and as far as the ocean, and keeping it as their own. Some indeed of its names are utterly vanished away, others of them being changed, and another sound given them are hardly to be discovered. Yet a few there are which have kept their denominations entire. For of the four sons of Ham, time has not at all hurt the name of Chus. For the Ethiopians, over whom he reigned, are even at this day, both by themselves and by all men in Asia, called Chusites. The memory also of the Mizraites is preserved in their name. For all we who inhabit this country of Judea call Egypt Mestri, and the Egyptians Mestraeans. 
Fut also was the founder of Libya, and called the inhabitants Futites from himself. There is also a river in the country of Moors which bears that name. Whence it is that we may see the greatest part of the Grecian historiographers mention that river and the adjoining country by the appellation of Fut. But the name it has now has been by change given it from one of the sons of Mizraim, who was called Libios. We will inform you presently what has been the occasion why it has been called Africa also. Canaan, the fourth son of Ham, inhabited the country now called Judea, and called it from his own name Canaan. The children of these four were these, Sabus, who founded the Sabaeans, Evilus, who founded the Evileans, who are called Getuli, Sabathes founded the Sabathans, they are now called by the Greeks Astaborans, Sabactus settled the Sabactans, and Ragmus the Ragmeans. And he had two sons, the one of whom, Judatus, settled the Judadeans, a nation of the western Ethiopians, and left them his name, as did Sabus to the Sabaeans. But Nimrod, the son of Chus, stayed and tyrannized at Babylon, as we have already informed you. Now all the children of Mizraim, being eight in number, possessed the country from Gaza to Egypt, though it retained the name of one only, the Philistim, for the Greeks called part of that country Palestine. As for the rest, Ludiam and Enemim and Labim, who alone inhabited in Libya, and called the country from himself Nedim, and Phithrosim, and Chesloim, and Sephthorim, we know nothing of them besides their names. For the Ethiopic war, which we shall describe hereafter, was the cause that those cities were overthrown. The sons of Canaan were these, Sidonius, who also built a city of the same name. It is called by the Greeks Sidon Amethys, inhabited in Amathene, which is even now called Amathi by the inhabitants, although the Macedonians named it Epiphania, from one of his posterity. Arudius possessed the island Aridus, Arucus possessed Arsi, which is in Libanus. But for the seven others, Euius, Chetius, Jebusius, Amorius, Gergesus, Eudius, Sinius, Samarius, we have nothing in the sacred books but their names, for the Hebrews overthrew their cities, and their calamities came upon them on the occasion following. Noah, when after the deluge, the earth was resettled in its former condition, set about its cultivation, and when he had planted it with vines, and when the fruit was ripe, and he had gathered the grapes in their season, and the wine was ready for use, he offered sacrifice, and feasted, and being drunk he fell asleep, and lay naked in an unseemly manner. When his youngest son saw this, he came laughing, and showed him to his brethren, but they covered their father's nakedness. And when Noah was made sensible of what had been done, he prayed for prosperity to his other sons. But for Ham, he did not curse him, by reason of his nearness in blood, but cursed his prosperity. And when the rest of them escaped that curse, God inflicted it on the children of Canaan. But as to these matters, we shall speak more hereafter. Shem, the third son of Noah, had five sons, who inhabited the land that began at Euphrates, and reached the Indian Ocean. For Elam left behind him the Elamites, the ancestors of the Persians. Ashur lived at the city Nineveh, and named his subjects Assyrians, who became the most fortunate nation beyond others. Arphaxad named the Arphaxadites, who are now called Chaldeans. Aram had the Aramites, whom the Greeks called Syrians, as Lord founded the Lordites, which are now called Lydians. Of the four sons of Aram, Uz founded Traconitis and Damascus. This country lies between Palestine and Celesyria. Ul founded Armenia, and Gather the Bactrians, and Misa the Massenians. It is now called Carex Spasinae. Selah was the son of Arphaxad, and his son was Heber, from whom they originally called the Jews Hebrews. Heber begat Joatan and Phaleg. He was called Phaleg because he was born at the dispersion of the nations to their several countries, for Phaleg among the Hebrews signifies division. Now Joktan, one of the sons of Heber, had these sons, Elmodad, Seleph, Azimoth, Jira, Adoram, 
Azel, Decla, Ebal, Abimael, Sabius, Ophir, Ulat, and Jobab. These inhabited from Kofan, an Indian river, and in part of Asia adjoining to it. And this shall suffice concerning the sons of Shem. I will now treat of the Hebrews. The son of Phaleg, whose father was Heber, was Ragau, whose son was Sirag, to whom was born Nahor. His son was Terah, who was the father of Abraham, who accordingly was the tenth from Noah, and was born in the two hundred and ninety-second year after the deluge. For Terah begat Abraham in his seventieth year. Nahor begat Haran when he was one hundred and twenty years old. Nahor was born to Sirag in his hundred and thirty-second year. Ragau had Sirag at one hundred and thirty. At the same age also Phaleg had Ragau. Heber begat Phaleg in his hundred and thirty-fourth year, he himself being begotten by Selah when he was a hundred and thirty years old, whom Arphaxad had for his son at the hundred and thirty-fifth year of his age. Arphaxad was the son of Shem, and born twelve years after the deluge. Now Abraham had two brethren, Nahor and Haran. Of these Haran left a son, Lot, and also Sarai and Milcah his daughters, and died among the Chaldeans, in a city of the Chaldeans called Ur. And his monument is shown to this day. These married their nieces, Nabor married Milcah, and Abram married Sarai. Now Terah hating Chaldea, on account of his mourning for Ilaran, they all removed to Haran of Mesopotamia, where Terah died, and was buried, when he had lived to be two hundred and five years old, for the life of man was already by degrees diminished, and became shorter than before till the birth of Moses, after whom the term of human life was one hundred and twenty years, God determining it to the length that Moses happened to live. Now Nahor had eight sons by Milcah, Uz and Buz, Kemuel, Kezed, Azau, Feldas, Jadelf, and Bethuel. These were all the genuine sons of Nahor, for Teba, and Gam, and Tachas, and Mekah were born of Rioma his concubine. But Bethuel had a daughter, Rebekah, and a son, Laban. Chapter 7 How Abram our forefather went out of the land of the Chaldeans, and lived in the land then called Canaan, but now Judea. Now Abram, having no son of his own, adopted Lot, his brother Haran's son, and his wife Sarai's brother. And he left the land of Chaldea when he was seventy-five years old, and at the command of God went into Canaan, and therein he dwelt himself, and left it to his posterity. He was a person of great sagacity, both for understanding all things, and persuading his hearers, and not mistaken in his opinions for which reason he began to have higher notions of virtue than others had, and he determined to renew and to change the opinion all men happened then to have concerning God. For he was the first that ventured to publish this notion, that there was but one God, the creator of the universe, and that as to other gods, if they contributed anything to the happiness of men, that each of them afforded it only according to his appointment, and not by their own power. This his opinion was derived from the irregular phenomena that were visible both at land and sea, as well as those that happened to the sun, the moon, and all the heavenly bodies. Thus, if, said he, these bodies had power of their own, they would certainly take care of their own regular motions. But since they do not preserve such regularity, they make it plain that in so far as they cooperate to our advantage, they do it not of their own abilities, but as they are subservient to him that commands them, to whom alone we ought justly to offer our honor and thanksgiving. For which doctrines, when the Chaldeans and other people of Mesopotamia raised a tumult against him, he thought fit to leave that country, and at the command and by the assistance of God he came and lived in the land of Canaan. And when he was there settled, he built an altar and performed a sacrifice to God. Borosus mentions our father Abraham without naming him, when he says thus, In the tenth generation after the flood, there was among the Chaldeans a man righteous and great, and skillful in the celestial science. But Hecatius does more than barely mention him, for he composed and left behind him a book concerning him. And Nicolaus of Damascus, in the fourth book of his history, says thus, 
Abram reigned at Damascus, being a foreigner, who came with an army out of the land above Babylon, called the land of the Chaldeans. But after a long time he got him up, and removed from that country also, with his people, and went into the land, then called the land of Canaan, but now the land of Judea, and this when his posterity were become a multitude. As to which posterity of his, we relate their history in another work. Now the name of Abram is even still famous in the country of Damascus, and there is shown a village named from him the habitation of Abram. End of Book 1, Chapter 6 and 7